everything we do is about the RV Odd Squad because you guys have given us this platform and our job is to serve you in all that we do. An RV Odd Squad member totaled their RV and was getting screwed over by their insurance company. We stepped in and suddenly the settlement went up by over 50%. Here are the top 10 dumb mistakes RVers make with their insurance and how to avoid them. Don't make these mistakes, guys. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes, and we RV pursuing freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, guys. It is. And in this video, we're going to talk about something so important. You see, we spend all this time and energy buying the right RV, picking out the floor plan, yeah. buying all the gadgets, and none of that matters if you get the wrong insurance. Our neighbor's vacation was ruined Wrecked. because they totaled their RV. Thankfully, they were parked next to us and we were able to step in. And we also learned a lot about what they had to go through through this process that we're gonna share with you. We're also gonna share the top 10 mistakes that our viewers make with their insurance. And it's little things that can cost you big. Big money, guys. So grab a notebook, take notes. These are gonna save you a ton of money and a lot of frustration. And at the end, we're gonna share a bonus mistake. Now this costs you zero dollars, and I guarantee that if you do it, it will save you thousands. Disclaimer, we're not insurance agents, no. but unfortunately, we've learned a lot about <laughs> insurance. So first mistake is not having an insurance agent. This is crucial because you need to have a human being to that talk you, to. yeah, not a 1-800 number. Yeah. You need a human being whose name you know, who you can develop a relationship with, that heaven forbid something ever happen, they actually know the names of you and your children. And more importantly, an insurance agent who understands RV policies, guys. And I know it's really hard finding providers that will insure full-time RVers. We can help with that. We've done the homework, we've found who you need to go to that can actually insure full-timers. When we first signed up for RV insurance, we did it on online, right? We filled out one of those forms where you say, just give your name and email and we'll give you 10 quotes. Well, two things happened. We got a lot of quotes, but we never talked to a human being. And what we did was we picked the lowest price. Come to find out the insurance that we were paying for for 18 months never would have covered us had we had an accident. Having an insurance agent, a live human being that you can talk to that understands the RVs, they're gonna be able to explain to you the difference between the book value and the cash value and the agreed upon value. Because the last thing that you want is to think you're insured for the whole RV then and you're realize not. you're not even covered for the financing. It's so important that you talk to a live human being. All right, the next mistake that is a big one is not disclosing all drivers. And this is especially important if you're like us where I don't really know how to drive the big fifth wheel and I don't do most of the driving. It's normally John. But you have. I have done some of the driving. And so it's really important to disclose all, not just current drivers, but potential drivers. Because heaven forbid, we only insure it for him to drive and then I'm driving and something happens. You really need to make sure that all possible drivers even if they don't quite know how to drive that RV yet, are listed in your policy. The third, and this is a big one guys, is not disclosing a business. And this is a big deal for all of us that are you know, full time and still in our working years. There's a fine line that you need to be aware of. You see, if you are using the RV for your work, if it's actually part of your work, you had better disclose that to your insurance agent. This is super important because we know a lot of RVers that run blogs or have a YouTube channel, right? If you make $1 in AdSense while you're RVing, mm -hmm. they're gonna find out. And as soon as they found out that you made $1 from your RV while you're RVing, they will deny your claim if you don't have business coverage. Here's a general rule of thumb. If you could operate your business out of a hotel room, you'll probably be okay. But if the RV is crucial to your business, make sure you're covered for it. Number four is one that I think we're all guilty of, and that's going with the minimums. I think half the reason it's so tempting to just get the minimums is because, boy, those cheap insurance prices do sure look attractive <laughs> at the get-go. 
but going with the minimums can be very, very dangerous, especially when you think about all the contents that you really need to ensure. Look at your laptop, your phone alone. Those are just two devices that are so expensive. So make sure you, that you don't just go with the minimums. This is another reason why it's so important to talk to an agent, a somebody human. that understands the RV insurance game, guys. As you know, we don't like insurance companies. I think they're a bunch of vultures. They'll take your payment all day long, but when it comes time for them to do their end and pay a claim, they will look for any reason possible to deny your claim. Think about all of the personal items that you have that you put into your RV. It adds up really quickly. So make sure that you don't just go with the minimums. The fifth mistake is not having uninsured motorist coverage. And frankly, I don't even know why it's legal for insurance companies to not cover uninsured motorists. Right, it's insane. <laughs> Number six, especially for those motor homes, you class A's out there, is not insuring your windshield. <laughs> All it takes is one little rock. <laughs> right, people don't want to spend six or seven bucks a month to insure the windshield. Seems like a lot, but do you know some of these windshields and these class A's run about 25 oh, to 3,500 bucks, guys? It's crazy. We've already gotten four dings on our windshields just in the truck and one in the Jeep. Yeah. So make sure your windshields are covered. Especially if you have one of those crazy expensive windshields. Don't go cheap. Number eight, is for the full timers and don't worry part timers we're gonna get to you soon but for you full timers you have to have full time coverage this is why it's so important to have a human being that you can actually talk to <laughs> and be honest with don't lie about this it, and, and you know what you think it's gonna be so much cheaper to just get that part-time policy it's not heaven forbid something happens and you can't use your insurance because you lied don't do it and I know it's really hard finding providers that will insure full-time RVers. We can help with that. We've done the homework. We've found who you need to go to that can actually insure full-timers. Number eight is traveling out of the country without protection. Yeah. If you are even considering crossing, whether it's in Canada or Mexico, make sure you have full insurance outside of the country. Number nine is especially important for you part-timers. You see, you need to make sure that you have coverage for your emergency expenses. You need to make sure that you have coverage that will reimburse you for finding another place to stay. Also for you full-timers, if your RV is your home and something happens to your home, where are you gonna go? This is huge. Yeah, and we've seen it happen to people. I don't know if you guys heard this story, but in Idaho last week, yeah. somebody's RV went off of a bridge. Oh my gosh. They hung there for an hour and eight minutes, right? While they were trying to get <sighs> saved by rescuers. Those are full-time RVers and they're stuck in a hotel right now. Now we've tried to reach out to them. We'd love to talk to them about oh what they went through. But if anything happens to your RV and you have nowhere else to live, it's gonna be expensive to live in hotels. Mm. So get coverage just in case anything happens to your RV, especially for full-time RVers. Now you part-timers, please pay special attention to this. You need to make sure that you have vacation liability insurance. Basically, it's insurance for while you're parked. You see, you don't just need to be covered when you're driving from destination to destination, but once you're parked, if something happens while you're parked at that spot, are you covered? Ask these questions, because you might not be. We had an RV Odd Squad member last year that literally took her RV out for the first time brand new, and a tree fell on top of her RV. She was parked, though. She, she was parked. So she wasn't covered for this type of insurance, guys. She was only covered when she was in in motion. So if the tree had fallen while she was driving. She'd have been all set, <laughs> right? This is but horrible. Yeah, but again, these insurance companies will look for anything to screw you out of any additional money. Before we get into the bonus mistake that costs you zero, but will save you thousands. So important, guys. Let's talk a little bit about what happened to Jerry and Debbie, because their vacation that they'd been planning for was completely <laughs> ruined. As you guys know, Florida is very difficult to stay in the winter months. Mm -hmm. So they planned this vacation last year. It was a five month vacation, supposedly. Jerry drove 1,200 miles from Massachusetts all the way down to Florida. And at the last gas station he got to. An hour away from his destination. An hour away from his destination. He was tired, he was a little burnt out. He made a tight turn at a gas station around one of those poles that protects the gas pump. A little too tight and it went up underneath the apron of the RV, under the RV. He kept driving, he had no idea mm -hmm. 
that he was ripping down the end of the truck until it got to the back of the RV. So by the time Jerry realized that he had gone over this bar, the gas station owner was outside, there was other people waving him down to stop him, and they stopped him right as the back of this bar got to the rear of his RV. Um, it had ripped open his gray tank. That was, thank God, it didn't rip open the black tank. That would have been a huge. There was a mess issue. all over the ground, and the owner was out there trying to get him out of the way because he was blocking traffic to this gas station. And he ripped the whole back end, the whole rear panel of the RV and the fifth wheel off, pulled it out. Ultimately, that's what totaled his RV. Yeah, it's not just the cosmetic damage from the exterior. But if you look underneath, there is significant it just rips damage all the way down. Obviously, their vacation was wrecked, and they didn't know how bad the damage was. So for the past two to three months, Jerry and Debbie have been on the phone with the insurance company. It's taken that long to get a settlement. Yeah, it's basically a hurry up and wait. The insurance company is like, "Get us this, get us this, get us this really fast." They stop everything to do that, and then they have to wait like weeks to hear back and to find out what's going on. Here's the deal guys, whether you have really good insurance or really cruddy insurance, the bottom line is, is that the process is slow and it's mm -hmm. very, very frustrating. We've watched Jerry and Debbie play three months of a game with the insurance company. Their job is to go low, your job is to go high. And the insurance company's nickel and diming them on little things like the AC that they had included was a different type of AC. The refrigerator was a different type of refrigerator, all of which cost less than the actual AC and refrigerator that he has on the RV, right? So he had to play this game of looking at every single line item and inspecting it to make sure that they were accurately representing the assets on his RV. The first price, which took two months to get it to them by the time the appraiser come out there and they looked at everything and they got all the pictures, by the time they were done, they had offered them $27,000 for a rig they purchased three years ago for about $55,000. This is when me and Mercedes stepped in. The saddest thing about this is that while they were jumping through all these hoops, Debbie looked at me and she said, I don't even want an RV anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's what really made us mad. We stepped in, we got involved. So when the appraiser came out, we come out and started videotaping the appraiser looking at the rig. <laughs> we asked Jerry and Debbie to attach us to all the correspondence they had emailing back and forth. Now, Jerry and Debbie were smart. They did a lot of research and they provided documentation to justify the higher value of their RV. But most importantly, they included us on the emails. As RV Odd Squad members, they let the insurance company know that we had their back. And half of the reason I think that we were able to help them so much is because we have friends that are insurance agents, Marty with Charlotte Insurance. So as this was happening, even though Jerry and Debbie are not his customers, we were picking his brain, asking him what should they do? Yeah, how can we help them? And he was giving us all the detailed <laughs> information. You may not know this, but being an RV Odd Squad member actually qualifies you for discounted group rates on insurance. You see, we have the RV Odd Squad insurance, and the more of us that join RV Odd Squad insurance, the lower, lower our rates, rates come get. Down. Exactly. This is huge. And not only that, but it's not just some call center. They're in North Carolina. You can actually talk to them. They're licensed in a whole bunch of states and getting licensed in even more. We have one member, Jerry Minch, who saved 1400 bucks by switching over, mm -hmm. and he actually added to his coverage. Yeah, this is huge. I mean, insurance doesn't have to be painful, it doesn't have to be expensive, and it can actually protect you when you need it. So please reach out to them and make sure that you're protected in your RV. We're a community and that's what's so important about this. That's why if anybody messes with you, boy, that makes me mad. <laughs> Once Mercedes and I jumped in and got involved and let them know that the RV Odd Squad was watching and was actually gonna produce a video to help protect their interests, things completely changed. Suddenly, about two weeks later, they got the second estimate back and it jumped by 50%. Which brings us to the 11th tip, which we should, the bonus tip, we should call this the Marty tip. It'll cost you zero dollars, but you should do it today before anything happens. Grab your iPhone, grab your phone, walk around your rig, get a quick video of everything, take lots of pictures. This is free, guys. It mm -hmm. might cost you a couple of cents to store it in the cloud, whatever. Mm -hmm. This information is gonna be so invaluable if you have a claim. Because if anything happens and you have to itemize in your brain, it's gonna be really hard. It is. But if you document it with your camera, 
it'll be so much easier to make sure that the insurance company doesn't screw you and you don't lose one penny that you deserve. Big thank you to Marty and Clark with Charlotte Insurance. They've done a knockdown job in making our Riot Squad members happy. We've never gotten one complaint from anybody who has gotten insurance for them, with the exception of it takes them a little time when we do videos like this to get back to you. Cut them a little slack, guys. They're going to get a lot of calls out of this video. And they know the RV niche. This is so important. Everything we do is about the RV Odd Squad because you guys have given us this platform and our job is to serve you in all that we do. We'll see you in the next video.